Hi, welcome again to this channel where we get to learn quint surveying. Today I would like us to learn how to take off reinforcement bars in uh, suspended slabs. From what we've been doing, for you to get a background of the same, you'll click on the description where you'll be finding a link that is uh, displaying a playlist of all the basics of how to do bills of quantities. Today I would like us to go straight into estimation for steel reinforcement bars that are designed for the suspended slabs. When you look at the plan that have just been displayed, the dark lines, for instance one that I'm pointing at, is a reinforcement bar on the suspended slab. But then there are those crisscrossing lines which are showing the denotations, the ones that are marking where the bars are, what the bars are, the number and so on. So that is what I would like us to learn and uh, be able to interpret those plans and be able to take off the reinforcement bars without any challenges. Now, uh, normally, these bars, they are quite a number. That is now the, normally the challenge with them. There are normally quite a number of them that are going to be displayed in various di directions and so on. So, for you to take them off efficiently, in most cases, uh, engineers that want to make the work of a conservator easier, they normally give you the numbers. Apart from the bar mark, they normally give you that we have this number of bars here and there, okay, in the design. And some even make it even better by telling you, giving you a, what we call a bar bending schedule, that this particular bar is uh, the, the equivalence of this dimension in terms of the length and so on. In this case, we don't have the bar bending schedule. So it means that you don't have the length of those various bars. Therefore, it's for you to interpret it from the plan and know what those particular bars, the lengths are, and ultimately get their weights in kgs. Okay? Now that we understand what we are doing, I just want us to make from one interpretation, then we use that interpretation to know how to interpret the reinforcement bars on the plan and thereafter we are going to take off the bars i'm going to use i'm going to use uh, for instance bar marker 01 i can see this is a uh, two let me just get where bar mark 01 is indicated so looking at the bars i have got bar mark 01 but it's not the best example that i can use to illustrate what i wanted to use uh, to illustrate so I will go to bar marker 09. So this is the this is the annotation. This is what we have showing you the mark. There is a line just uh, below that uh, description 18 to 10 09 1250 B1. And that line below it is going straight until there is a perpendicular line that it's going uh, perpendicular to it to that particular line. Okay? And when you look at my uh, where my the positive uh, cursor is, the plus sign, you can see that mark. And at this point, the line showing you uh, the annotation of the bar is perpendicular to the bar. It's uh, it's perpendicular to the reinforcement bar. Okay. So whenever the annotation has been indicated, which is where my cursor is indicating is uh, pointing now, follow it through until where it's perpendicular. Whatever line that is perpendicular with, at the point where there is that uh, small circle that is dark, that is where the reinforcement bar is indicated. So whenever you are finding, for instance, this is indicating 18T10, 09250B1, okay? Under it is the line. That line is basically an identification line. It's not the reinforcement bar. For you to get the reinforcement bar, follow the identification line straight. The line that it's perpendicular with is the reinforcement bar. And to make it even clearer, there is that cycle, the small cycle that is dark. The small dark cycle is the reinforcement bar that is passing across it. <coughs> perpendicular, sorry. Perpendicular to it. Okay? That is the point that you have to understand. Once you understand that, it's going to be very easier for you to tackle the rest of the work because it's very challenging for you to understand which is the reinforcement bar and which is the identification bar. So, that said, this is 18T10. 18 
is the number of the bars okay so i can just indicate here 18 18 number bars okay while t10 okay while that has been noted t10 t10 is the size of the reinforcement so it's um, 10 10 millimeter dia bar reinforcement bar while 09 zero 09 zero is now what you call the annotation the bar mark okay bar mark you will notice that these marks uh in most cases most of them are ident they are uh, different from one another that is basically a mark that has been given to to the bar okay so this is uh, 09 it's the bar mark 250 250 is what we call the interval this is now the interval at which the reinforcement bars have been laid while b1 while b1 here is now going to indicate uh, bottom one bottom one there is normally a bottom one bottom two top one top two okay at the bottom at the bottom of the element there is the first layer of the reinforcement bar that is called the bot bottom one then there is the second layer where in most cases they are going in different directions okay so in one direction at the first layer is bottom one then in another direction at also at the bottom is now what we call the bottom two so that in a reinforcement uh, element i mean uh, in a, in, a, in a slab they are normally indicated depending on the layers in which those particular bars are occupying okay so that well noted then i've just indicated to you that this mark this bar or uh, this line if you look at this line just below this mark here that line there is identification line that's an identification line okay then you follow that identification line straight until where you meet that dark cycle and therefore whatever is perpendicular to it is the reinforcement bar so the dark cycle is here and the reinforcement bar the reinforcement bar is this okay so that is the reinforcement bar while the identification line is perpendicular to it the, ident the reinforcement bar is always meeting the ad identification line at a perpendicular at a perpendicular angle okay so that is the basic and that is what you need entirely so that you are able to interpret the reinforcement bar and how they are normally laid for the suspended slab very very crucial if you don't understand that properly you are not able to move forward so that is why I've taken time to explain it quite properly. If you understand that well, then you're good to go. The rest of the items, for instance, now for instance, we are, we are starting from uh, bar mark 09. For, for the bar mark 09, you've already identified how the line is. So you are able to get the length, basically, that you can see it from this grid to the other grid, get the line, uh, get the length of that uh, uh, reinforcement bar. So once you have the length, then from the length you adopt the formula of calculation of uh, weight of uh, reinforcement bars okay so from what i've explained from what i've explained we've identified the bar uh, we've identified the reinforcement bar okay once you've done so uh, that is what comes first reinforcement bar identification okay so once you've identified the reinforcement bar which uh, following the the steps that i've used to explain how to get to that then now uh, weight in kgs weight is therefore equal to diameter times diameter okay the diameter is now basically now the diameter of the reinforcement bar this is 18 t10 so the diameter here is 10 millimeters therefore we'll use 10 times 10 okay so it's diameter squared times the total length total length then you will divide by 162 the total length is in meters 
So for instance, this is the one that we've got, calculate the length of one, okay? So that the one that you have here, get that length uh, following that grid or following the dimension that you have here, get the total length. Once you have the total length, then it's now going to be 10. So for example, in this case, example here is equals to diameter here is 10 times 10 okay times the total length so the total length using this example that we are, we are having here when you follow this properly you can see there is 3.2 meters okay 3.2 meters here and then it goes up to this point up to take the 3.2 from uh, this uh, B1 up to halfway here, it's uh, 600 millimeters. That is what I read from uh, from the architectural plan. So you add that. So you add the 3.2, you add the 0 0.6. That is going to be around 3.8. Okay. Of course, you have to make adjustments for the overlaps and uh, the turn-ups for this uh, particular reinforcement bar. Okay. So once you have that, say for example that you're going to give a turn up or those adjustments for around another one meter so the 3.8 plus 1.2 plus 1 meter gives you around 4.8 meters okay so there's 10.10 10, uh, 10 times 10 times 4.8 meters okay that is now the length of just one bar but then we need the total uh, total length so 4.8 times the number of bars in this case there are 18 bars according to that uh, annotation or the identification given there they are 18 and then we divide by 162 162 is a constant for conversion of length well you have incorporated the diameter into kgs okay so even if you want them in turn from conversion conversion in a, from kgs into turns is a very easy is a very easier step so you just have what you've um, calculated in kgs you can convert that into turns so whichever way that you want your final answer to be. In this case, we are using, uh, we are uh, doing our calculation to convert it into, into kgs. So uh, let's convert this so that we find just an example of what I'm using for bar mark number 9 to convert that length, okay, into kgs. So we have here uh, 10 times 10 times 4.8 times 18 divided by 162 comes to around 53.3 kgs. Okay, and why it's not right here. Fifty-three point three kgs. Okay. So I'll just zoom it out. You're able to follow what I've done. So basically, that is a basic example of how to interpret reinforcement bar in a suspended slab and how to take it off. So I've just used one example of one bar. Okay, so from the one bar that I've used, I've given an elaboration of how to go about it, how to use the particular length, do your interpretation, and find it very, very easy to do your calculation. So that is how to go about that. It's as simple as that and requires no much task as long as you understand or you are able to interpret what you're doing, then it's that easier. Okay. So that brings us to the end of our session where we were interpreting uh, reinforcement bars for a suspended slab. And for any more queries that you might have, please put them at the comment section. I will answer to each and every one of them. And I promise that as well as moving forward, we'll get even more examples in relation to interpretation of reinforcement bars, especially on suspended slabs and how to go about them, how to do the calculation, and so on. For all those of you who have requests on private tutoring, kindly have uh, reached me on my phone number that is going to be also, uh, you can uh, see it there at the, just at the bottom of this video, there is my phone number there. Just reach me, we are able to go through that way. Private tutoring, more in-depth coverages of what you've covered here, what we've learned here, is always available and you don't need to struggle to find it in any way okay so also uh, any construction and estimation or costing materials for learning materials available from my from my my collection at a very affordable prices any construction or conserving consultants that you might need 
just reach out i will give it to you in a very very reliable manner and a very convenient time thank you very much uh, stay tuned kindly you don't want to miss any of these upcoming sessions because this is the point where you get to have your explanations well done kindly subscribe to help the channel help the channel grow as well and you also be able to find out more that you need in construction and estimation thank you very much have a great time till we meet again in our next session bye bye